This is uh, how it starts out, which okay. is just, it's, it's tough. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of KMS Reloaded Main Wilderness Edition. I'm getting over cold, so I sound like shit more than usual. I walked up this big hill, realized that I brought a can of Coke instead of a can of water, so I've been hacking. <coughs> I've restarted the show like a dozen times. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I'm an idiot. As usual, I'm an idiot. Uh, for the sake of brevity, uh, we're going to cover just two episodes this week, the 6th and the 7th, which was, I think it was Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, before we get started, I want to talk about something real quick. I do this show once a week. It is usually, hopefully, 20 minutes or less. It's usually been 30 or 40. It covers uh, t about 10 hours, we'll say, to make the math even. 10 hours of Kirk Minahan show. This is the fifth episode, I think. So it's about 50 hours of Kirk Minahan show. This show, me, has been mentioned for maybe 30 seconds of that fucking 50 hours. So it goes to show you the, the piece of the pie that I fucking, you know, get sliced into, which is fine. But just the fact that I'm addressing or defending myself, I should say, kind of makes me feel stupid, but I mean, this is the world we are, right? This whole thing is like, if something bothers you, if someone takes shots, you take shots back. And so I've kind of been ducking it. It's the third or fourth time I've come up <coughs> and I feel like I've been ducking it because I don't bring it up. So one of the things that men are said about me when I first started doing this show and when I was on KMS is that I said whatever I had to say in the moment to get by, that I didn't really have any takes. I was like Steve from Gloucester, or Steve from Gloucester's all over the place. It's because he's saying whatever he has to say in the moment to get by, you know, that to, to get a response, to get a reaction. And I was guilty of that too, still am. That's why I hide behind this edited program. <clears throat> so why do I bring that up? So the producers on the Kirk Minahan show, everything they touch now is a bit to fill, as Kirk used to say, to fill that quarter hour. Everything they touch now is a bit to make kind of the show move for content. And, and that's what their job is. But now my coming on the show is a bit for Coleman. So I'm gonna put that bit to bed. I appreciate the offer, Kirk. I sincerely 100% appreciate the offer, but I will decline. Um, I will decline to come on the Kirk Minahan show. Hopefully that offer stands in the future. And if I'm able to, I'll, I'll come and do it. But I'm not gonna be part of fucking Coleman's bits anymore. Like seriously, it's like, fuck off. Um, Kirk has talked about this show that he hasn't watched any, any, any of this show. And this show isn't for Kirk, you know? This show is for the seven people that watch it. <coughs> I like doing it. I like coming out into the woods and doing it and doing something different. I know this is like the fifth wrap-up show. Oh, literally the last of five wrap-up shows, the Sunday before the new week starts. I know not many people watch it, but I enjoy coming out here. I enjoy doing this. I enjoy for the people that want to watch it, giving them a little bit something different to look at than someone standing in front of a microphone, you know, in their fucking kitchen or whatever. And that's not a dig on anyone. But like, that's, that's just why I started doing this. You know, when I did this, started doing the show, the network was dead. There was no one on the network. And now you've got tons of good shows, a lot better than this one on the network. But I just like doing it. So when Kirk says that he doesn't watch it, it's not for you, Kirk. So don't fucking watch it. And you could keep saying, obviously, he's gonna keep saying it if it comes up, because people keep asking him if it comes up. You know, people keep asking him, do you watch it? And, but. You know, whatever. He doesn't watch the fucking show. It is what it is. There's cuts on this show. And e even, if, even if I was super interesting, the fact that there's cuts of him on this show, he wouldn't watch the show. So it's not like, I'm not one of these shows on the Kirk Minahan Network that's design is to get Kirk's reaction. And a lot of other people would say like, that's stupid, you're wasting your time. But that's just the honest truth is I'm not doing this to get Kirk Minahan's clout. Sorry, I mean, if that makes me stupid, then that makes me stupid. 
Um, it is what it is. So fuck you! Just kidding. All right, let's dive right in. I don't even, I don't think I'm gonna keep any of that. That's embarrassing. So, February 6th, we have Dying Guy and Mike in studio. Joe the Dying Guy. Dying Guy is better. I think so. Well, Joe's, a, so. Joe's like a Joe's simple Joe's very man. generic. How old are you, Joe? 38. What? 38. You were born in 38? No, I was born in 85. But I'm 38 years old. <laughs> what are you talking about? I know. <laughs> what do you mean? 38. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> You're the same age as Cullen. It's the same age as Cullen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Cullen is very handsome. Okay. Yeah. How would you guess Joe is, Justin? If you had the guess, you know, if you didn't know, if you just met him? 51. Oh, my God. That was like 66. <laughs> is because of all the illness? Yeah. Holy shit. Holy shit do I feel bad about shitting on the dying guy. And even though he's not the dying guy, even though he's just the sick guy, the really, really, really fucking sick guy, holy shit do I feel bad about shitting on the 70-year-old, 38-year-old guy. Like, that is fucked up. Like, I didn't even, like, if you would have told me this just by listening to it, like, Blind Mike's version of this event, I would be like, you're full of shit. But this dude is, like, straight up, um, fucking 70 years old at 38. So I changed my tune on this guy completely. Whatever this guy wants, he wants to golf with Kirk, whatever. You know, just let him let him get whatever he wants. Let him milk this motherfucker. This dude deserves it. He's been through a lot of shit. This dude has been through a lot of fucking shit. But again, he is just the real sick guy. He is not the fucking dead guy. So what's next? All right, so... Oh, yes. So this is where Coleman gets exposed for being the key simp that he is. And the only reason I say that word is because the fucking old young guy said it. Because the old, sick, dying, sick, old, young guy said it. He keeps calling him a simp. He says, simping ain't easy, Coleman. He's absolutely right. Coleman is a Keeg's simpy simp. And Kelly gets duped by fake Coleman. And here we go. <laughs> so what does NY Coleman have to say about this? So she goes, happy you got a job back, but damn, asshole behavior. And then she responds to that and says, unless this is a fake, because everyone started being like, you fucking idiot. idiot. This is, right. she unless, goes, this unless this is a fake <laughs> Coleman and the real Jukum Coleman disputes this behavior. Which she knew. She clearly knew that she was calling how, how angry he is. Coleman, well, it's an annoying tweet. The real Coleman retweets and goes, yikes, this is very Slytherin of you. At Juke, at Juke Me, Coleman strikes again. Mm. So that's like an inside little like, yeah. It's not inside. She's a Harry Potter fan. I'm a Harry Potter that's fan. That's exactly, an insult. That's exactly yeah. it. I'm just that's saying, exactly that's an insult. It. And I completely get like Coleman's like typical producer snake 101. Like, you know, watch my own back. I'm not going to be here for much time. You know, the longest tenured producer on KMS is only two years. Keep everyone happy, and then as soon as Kirk's done with me, I can just fucking pew, 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 wherever he needs to go. That's that's his smart plan. But in reality, Coleman's a fucking idiot. Um, he doesn't realize that he's one bad day. Like, one Kirk comes in in one of those moods. He's one bad day away from Kirk just kicking this fucking guy out and saying, good luck. I got Justin now. Don't need you for literally anything, and good luck, say la vie. I mean, let's face it, Steve Robinson, Dave Cullinane, never had as many technical issues. Cullinane was a technical nightmare, and the show was fucking technically better than it has been under Coleman's tutelage. So the idea that Coleman thinks that by kissing Kelly's ass, it's like career, like it's, it's, it's kind of like keeping himself safe career-wise in the future. It's just fucking stupid. One of the things he should be doing, obviously, is taking shots at Kelly Keegs. Why? Because she's fucking dead weight. You think Kelly Keegs is going to be there in a year? Is Kelly Keegs going to be there when her, whatever her contract is, whenever the fuck that expires? <coughs> Does anyone think Kelly Keegs is going to be there? Absolutely not. She's going to be one, one day we're going to get this press release from KFC 
It's gonna say something like, oh, Kelly Keegs, she's no longer with the company today. She's going to start her own thing. You know, Kelly Keegs did a lot of good here, but she didn't quite fit in, and we wish Kelly Keegs well on her new venture. Blah, 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 blah. That's what's gonna be coming soon. So why doesn't Coleman just grow a pair of fucking Tic Tacs and just fucking kick at the dead weight? That's all you gotta do, Coleman. Just take a couple little shots. It'll please your boss and you'll look like a fucking hero. All right, so I had to play this next cut just because I love listening to this fucking guy. So here it is. Uh, so we had Gus and Steve last night. I was, I was I appalled not, by I this. I did not listen to oh, this. Oh, it'll hurt your heart. <laughs> this, this is, I'll put it into perspective for you. Uh-huh. This is Steve essentially had Gus on and said, I love so much when you come in and dance. Uh, it was a Howard not. Stern I moment. Knew, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> this was so predictable. Oh. Did you hear this show or no? No, I haven't. All right, go ahead. So it's going to be announced gaming with Gus. Awesome. So <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of feel bad for Steve because now he's in a place where he can do no right. He, he literally can't do any right. He's fucked in March, but we're going to kind of iron out the stuff right during uh, February, get the goods and bads and that. That is and then, cool. and yeah, so what did you that. say? The goods and bads no, what and did, that? What did uh, Steve say? Uh, February, get the goods and bads and that. That is and cool. Then, oh yeah, so that, that is that cool. That is super <laughs> cool, <laughs> Gus. You're this a cool guy. <laughs> but that being said, man, he is an idiot. I just can't believe. Oh, it's so bad how he comes across. Oh my God. It's so embarrassing, but I fucking love Steve. How can you not love the guy? Jesus Christ. He just needs to relax. He just needs to relax and be himself. Grow some thick skin, relax, be yourself, and you'll he'll be fine. He doesn't need to start pretending to be somebody else. It'll come over with time. Um, I've never gotten there, but that's just what I've been told. So we go back to Coleman. He just starts getting beat up even more and more. And this is when the old tweets start really showing up. And this is where we get really bad, bad fucking Coleman. Just kissing ass to these Barstool Sports podcasts. Terrible Barstool Sports podcasts. Like, Coleman's tweeting about this more. Like, more of these tweeted about the show from the show podcast. <laughs> supposed to have some, like, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. So, That's true. Crunch those numbers, Justin. So he had a... Uh... By the way, he probably has a great best of from that season of that show. <laughs> two hours, probably <laughs> super yeah, yeah, Perfectly edited. Great, yes. <laughs> like perfect. Really well done. I'm going to listen like, to this show tonight, and I'm going to come in tomorrow and be like, Kirk. <laughs> Can you imagine how bad this show the show is? It's like, show. It's, it's definitely not good anymore. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I'm your... saying it's probably, like, I'm older now. So I what, probably why are you saying think so four so then? It was three years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not good anymore. So why it was great three years ago. It's not good anymore. <laughs> it's probably not. And oh baby, does it get worse. Get Legit went there. to buy green tea shots for Glenny Balls, Kelly Cleeks, Casey this Smith, happen, and Tom. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> no one's doubting that. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Well, you said legit, Coleman. That made me believe it was a real thing. Well, yeah, that's why. I legit. Did. I'm glad you authentic. this. At Thank bar you. A tonight and then proceeded to get kicked out because my car declined. Just know the effort was there. So Kelly Queegs retweets that, or quote tweets, and goes, fucked up. Proud of you for the effort. Also, I did not need any more shots. And Coleman was fucked. I don't, I don't think I can. I don't think. I'm going to fire him if this annoys me. So go ahead. Uh, there's, a, there's a 40% chance I'm going to fire you in the next it 10 sucks. minutes. It's go ahead. He responds to that <laughs> with... Love you, Queen. You are killing it up there. Oh. Praise, <laughs> the, praise the praise emoji. Oh man. Oh. Give me those pills. <laughs> what, do, what do you have to say for yourself? That one, that one sucks. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? That one sucks. How was this not found by Mena fans? I'm almost as disappointed. Yeah, seriously. Man. And it's great to see Kirk just keeping his foot on the gas. Um, this is something that Coleman really hasn't gotten too much of, kind of giving him a little stress test. It's kind of good to, to see how much he can take. But again, if this is a stress test, it's still on like the low setting. Coleman's not getting both barrels yet. And Kirk just keeps the train on moving. He just keeps it fucking running. Yeah, you're a huge Keeks fan. I'm not a Keeks fan. What are the tweets? What are the tweets? You're definitely a Keeks fan. But I'm not. It, it's, what are the tweets? Because it's you three said you did years the most, ago. I'm not a fan of her like to this day because of You said you did the most tweets. relatable podcast you've ever heard in your life. Right. All right that was maybe, Mike. Maybe. <laughs> just a slight exaggeration. Okay? I'm saying she's a queen. <laughs> yeah, pop off. I mean, but no. I'm saying you're a big fan of hers. I don't think he like secretly loves her or like he wants to fuck her or anything like that. I just think he like wants to be her like occupationally. That's a word, right? Occupationally. Yeah. 
He wants to be her like occupationally or yeah, like physically maybe, sexually even, who knows? But that's like his thing. I don't think it's like a attraction kind of thing. I just think he wants to be her. He wants to be fucking Kelly Keeks. Kelly Keeks, <laughs> April 19, 2021. People are going to bond over getting the same type of vaccine that's going to piss me off so much. Courtney, where are my F Pfizer homies at? Coleman, gang, gang. <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole. Ooh, that's fucking rough, dude. I mean, I've had some bad moments, but that is rough. That is fucking rough. And speak <laughs> segue and speaking of rough, we get this fucking asshole, this loser. I had to play this cut, but this fucking scumbag John Cena. Was there a small part of you that wanted to just kind of go along with it for a day just to get some of the tributes out there? It's about the just John so you Cena can see all the nice things people might say and then be like, there a, small, a small part of me that wanted to end my existence. The answer to that is a resounding no. I <laughs> no. love the gift of life, and I'm I want to I want to have the gift as long as I possibly can. So no, no. not to end your existence, but to just kind of not say anything about the rumor being fake for a day. What and and where where is the good in that? <laughs> I guess people it, would just be like, would be like John oh, man, Cena. I love John yeah. Cena. He's such a great guy. Remember that time? I, people would share anecdotes. Like, I would have tweeted, remember that time John Cena wanted to fuck my belly button? Uh, man, I miss that guy. <laughs> uh, I know I know. you guys are trying to have some fun. I just uh, I just lost a really close friend two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> and why is he so fucking humorless now? Like, why is the dude who's dressed up in a superhero costume so fucking humorless? And this isn't the first time he's been like this. It is super bizarre how this dude was a WWE wrestler, like trying to, I, I, I mean, I never watched it at, in his era, but wasn't he known for being like charismatic? Like where the fuck did the charisma go? What is up with this guy? I don't understand. Do you remember why he was in the news not that long ago, maybe a couple of years ago, what he apologized for? Do you guys remember? I, I completely forgot, so I, I googled it. I remember he, he did this bullshit apology for something, and I couldn't remember what it was. And why did he apologize? The Asian community was a target as well. Let's talk about Chinese people with their kung fu and all that silly chang chang chong talk. I can't understand you. No, 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 nothing like that. Nothing as egregious as that. Uh, this fucking guy had the audacity, had the balls to say Taiwan was a country. <gasps> oh my god. Don't know why I brought that up, but. Uh, just for the sh for the for giggles, just to remind you guys what a humorless fuck this guy is. So now we move on to February seventh, I think. Yes, February seventh. We got Mutt <coughs> and Quiet Mike in studio. I'm calling him. He, Quiet Mike runs marathons for a charity called One Mission. The Coleman, the Coleman <coughs> Twitter history saga continues. They play this clip from Kelly Keegs. Um, it's a bad clip. Makes me embarrassed for the fact that I actually was felt bad for this chick for like two seconds. So this was the episode. This was once again the episode that he said w when it became his fave pod. Right. Yeah. Each I think topic. That's what, I, what, cool. what are what conversation are we going to bring to each topic? So let's get into it. We're going to start off with gays. Yes, we're um, gays. Kelly, why don't you lead us off? I will kick us off with this one because I I champion for this to be on this episode specifically because I think that it's like it's it's a funny situation because I know that we are three basic bitches. We're all straight. Oh God. And Shoot me no, we do not have a, a gay head. person on this podcast to represent this for us. Eventually, I think once we start having guests and stuff, we should do that. I think mm -hmm. it'd be great. Maybe Pride Month, we'll do something fun. We'll do a little collab, whatever. That does sound like fun. For now, I just <laughs> want to give a shout out to like the culture of gay people and how inclusive it is and how inviting it is and how warm people are and how kind they are. How the hell does like she so know? Many... Wow, what a, she's so brave, huh? What a brave Kelly Keegs take, wow. She is really putting herself out on a limb. Yes, they are, people in that community are so super inclusive. Cause you know, if you believe, if you don't believe I should say that men can get pregnant, then you're a fucking bigot. Super inclusive. If you don't believe, that men 
born with testosterone shouldn't compete against women. You are a piece of shit. Super inclusive. I saw this Twitter thread uh, the other day, like a couple of weeks ago. It was fucking disgusting. And it was basically these psychopaths um, that were born male and get the surgery and identify as female. Um, these people, they take tomato paste and they freeze it and these psychopaths insert it into their body cavity, frozen tomato paste, so they can menstruate. And if you don't agree with that, you're a piece of shit. If you think these people are weird for doing that, you're a fucking piece of shit. Do whatever you want. It's literally a free country. You want to be a man, a woman, whatever the fuck, it doesn't matter to me. Be happy and be safe. If you stick tomato paste in the fucking cavity where your balls were, you're a fucking psychopath. And you deserve to be called out for it. So yeah, that's a really great all-inclusive community. I wish I had a, a drop of um, fucking Jerry going, scum. Don't know why. But Brave Kelly Keegs, and speaking of Brave, another great segue by me. We got Coleman's take on the rapist, Kobe Bryant. Helicopter parent of the year. <laughs> Zing! Today's episode of Senior Quotes. Are you wearing the Kobe shirt here? Regretfully. Um, I don't know. That, that was a different one. Okay, okay, yeah. Wild yeah. choice. That was a wild choice. Discuss Interesting move. Yeah. The passing of Kobe Bryant and Gianna Bryant, as well as the other victims of that crash the other day. And we look over Kobe's career, the precedent he set. The what? And a lot Precedent. Of, he's okay. Set. Okay. Go ahead. Aftermath of his passing, and we'll try and lighten it up towards the end with some <laughs> bachelor talk. And <laughs> <laughs> Coleman's sad voice is great. There's nothing better than the fake Coleman sad voice. Oh, hey guys, the rapist died. In all seriousness, um. It's obviously anytime someone, young women, young people die in a tragedy like that, it's terrible. But at the end of the day, it's like um, the dude raped a chick and got away with it. And also, I, I kind of, this is a dickhead thing to say, but I think when you put your children in a helicopter consistently on your whim, Knowing how dangerous helicopters can be and the fucking helicopter crashes and she dies, that's fucking on you, dude. Helicopters are fucking dangerous. They always have been and they always will be. Just because you're rich, that doesn't mean anything. So as fucked up as it is to say, part of his fucking kid's death is on him. I bet you they'd still be alive if they took a fucking goddamn chauffeur in a car. I know everyone will say that cars are super dangerous. But when a fucking car crash happens, you get out and fucking exchange insurance information. When a fucking helicopter crashes, they fucking scrape you off the ground with a fucking goddamn fucking spatula. <coughs> Where the fuck did I get that from? What a loser I am. Anyway. So then we get to Mutt, and Mutt has super strong morals. Mutt is like the epitome of just moral character. Except if, you know, you're a horse. You know, he won't bet on dogs, but if you're a horse, you're fucked. Not doing it. What's the fucking difference between a horse and a fucking dog? What's the, what's the difference? Yeah, they run around in circles. Different. No, no, no. The horses, I, I'm not, the horses are treated uh, immaculately. For the you, most part. They get I don't know what the dogs are. I don't know what the dogs are. 3,000 horses died last year. They get shot yeah, every day. Oh, it's 3,000. There are, there are some bad apples out there for sure. But for the you most part, the ra racehorses are treated very, very well. They live a pampered lifestyle. They get up, they eat, go for a little walk, come back, they eat, they're groomed, hang out, How take a nap. How do you know about these dogs? Kind of sounds know. like your day, Mutt. I, I, don't, I don't know about the dogs. So what are you saying there? So let's say they treat them accurately, though. Let's no, say that, stop. Let, don't do that, Let's Coleman. say they're treated. Is that, was that a live? Was that live down in Australia? Or no? that, was, that was me. I didn't even oh, hear cool. it. <laughs> I, actually, I, I actually didn't even hear it. What was it? I didn't hear it. It was just a... Oh, is that, okay. I'm it's not necessary. I can hear it the first time. Seriously. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Fucking tweet to Kamala Harris. Get the jello get the jello out. Like, it's mama love for you. It's glue tie, baby. Zip bag over there. Fucking. <laughs> That's like saying how like, that funny. How is that funny? It makes you feel better. It's the last time Justin will ever hear. 
he gets so upset and I, I get why, but part of me is like, why do you get so upset if it's true, dude? It's, it's not like he's making it up. And then this is a great clip of just Kirk just fucking pummeling him with statistics and Mutt can't handle it. Horses kill, this is horse racing wrongs. You know this one, this site? Yes, yeah, they're very, oh, very oh, oh, you like this site? They're very accurate, sure. Very what's accurate. your issue with this site? They're trying to report what's going on in the world. You're, sure, they team up with PETA, that awesome organization. Horses Great. killed on or at US tracks 2023. In my heart, January 1st, Los, Alamo, Los Alamitos. Yes. Multiple fractures, multiple ruptures. No huddle, January 1st. Reeds, January 1st. Awesome charge, January 2nd. Another one, January 3rd. Injured, euthanized. Another one, January 4th. January 4th, January 5th, January 6th, January 6th, January 6th, January 7th, January 7th, January... Oh my God, Mutt! It's like a Peter King segment. It is much... Jesus, I ain't no kidding. <laughs> Look at this! Look at this! Holy yeah, shit! There are animals that die during in the sport. I'm I'm well aware of it. I'm well aware. Of 2024 it. isn't much better, Kirk. I've got bad news. West for Virginia, you. Charles. One second, Justin. West Virginia, Charlestown races. You know that place? Yeah, you were. I think you were did a show near there at one point. 23 dead racehorses. So I looked it up, and depending on what what group you look at, it's usually about 800 to a thousand horses a year die from horse racing. Imagine that in any other sport where 800 to 1,000 of, of the participants get taken out back and fucking shot. That is crazy to me. And it's like, it's not like it's mice or something. They're fucking horses. You know, no one gives a shit if mice get blinded in a lab to test some broad's fucking shampoo or something. No one gives a shit about that. But it's like, we're shooting fucking horses so Mutt can have Mutt stack? It's like, Jesus Christ, the sacrifices these hero horses make for Mutt's fucking future, man. Anyway, he doesn't give a fuck about any of this. It's a weird hill for Mutt to die on. New York. Belmont Park, 34 horses. We're just going to read year. all the horses. Uh, uh, the horses have died in the sport of horse racing. I'm aware. People I'm going to ask for 34 should... gun salute here in a second. Uh. 34. Delaware Park, 14. How many died in Santa Anita last year? Uh, quite a few. 27. Bad, bad, ser bad service year for Santa Anita. Delmar, 7. 554. So, like, the pizza business. I mean, it's crazy right now, isn't it? <laughs> and you're going to bet $50 on a dog? I'm saying no to that, yes. And again, I know I'm repeating myself, but it is crazy to me that, I, and I never knew this before I looked this up, but it's crazy to me that this many horses die in the year 2024, it's still legal. It's wild to me, but that's fucking America, baby. America's fucking crazy. We'll have a fucking gun in your hand, a beer in another, fucking you know, fireworks, smoking fucking weed while you're fucking on pain medication for your back, going to a horse race while they're fucking shooting the horses out back. That's the United States, baby. It's fucking wild. 23. This year already? In 2024, there have been 23 dead horses and counting. We're not done yet. What about dogs? Uh, you run, a lot in a lot of places. All king aside, you didn't run over any horses that night. You got arrested. Oh, fuck okay. off. <laughs> Just, it's fucking six years ago now. Can we get over it? Oh, I think you see the car! <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? These horses are never going to stand a chance. They will never stand a chance as long as there are big stars like Mutt Minansky on the case. We're going to have, in order to save these horses, we're going to have to take Mutt down. It's really the only thing. I think I just realized my life's mission now to take out Mutt Manansky.